Hi, this is David Frericks. I'm with the Alexa for Everyone team, and I have the privilege of being here with you today to talk about Lavazza Voicey, and specifically how Lavazza used all of Alexa to brew your cup of coffee. But before we go into talking a little bit about Lavazza Voicey and the process they went through, I'd like to share a little bit about myself so you can know where I'm coming from when we talk about this. So I joined Amazon back in 2017, and here at Amazon, I've been able to work on things like multi-room music, smart home for AVS, been able to work to help create some new profiles like micless AVS, as well as voice in and text out. And before I came to Amazon, I had a background in virtual reality, in mobile music, as well as in smart home and mobile agents and voice agents. But throughout that entire time, I really have had a common theme. And that common theme has been, how can we make machines that adapt to the needs of people, not the other way around? Because too often we go ahead and we create products that are whizzy new technologies, expecting people to change their habits. But the most flexible thing we've ever invented is the microprocessor and computing technology we should be able to take advantage of that to serve our customers better. And that's exactly what we're talking about here today with Lavazza Voicey. And before we go into it, I'd like you to see exactly what I mean in terms of what they've been able to deliver with Lavazza Voicey. Take a look. Alexa, good morning. Good morning. Let's start your morning routine. Alexa, make me a coffee. What you think that we think is cool? What you think that we think is cool? So now that you've actually seen the product in action, let's give a summary to start out at the end and kind of say, okay, what is it that we're actually talking about here today? Well, first of all, when you're trying to create a product, make sure that you're looking at the unique value proposition that you can provide to the customer at each stage of the journey, starting with setup, learning, use, and support. Make sure that you fully understand the customer needs and then how you can address those needs. And once you've created those value propositions, take those value propositions and turn them into detailed requirements that affect every part of the solution. It's not just about the device itself or the software that runs on the device. It's also about your cloud, about a companion app or skills you might apply to help that product create its full feature set. You need to make sure you take all of those things into account. And then finally, once you've understood the full set of requirements, then you go ahead and actually apply various Alexa technologies to solve that problem. Don't fall into the trap of saying, oh, this is an AVS product or this is an ACK product. Really go in and don't check the box, but focus on how you can pick various technologies to serve the needs of your customers. Because when customers are looking at your product, they want a choice. They want something unique, something that only you can offer them. And the main reason why we're giving this talk is because so many device makers will come to us and say, hey, I wanna build a smart speaker. And that's a really great thing to want to do, but there are a lot of smart speakers on the market and your company has something unique to offer to your customers. And so really understand what your customers need and then what you can bring to your customers in terms of unique value, and then use that to be able to create the product that you want to put into the market. 
That differentiation can be in the forms of the shape and uh, the form factor of the product. It can be in terms of the quality level of what you're producing, the functionality, specialization. All of these things are possible, but make sure that you have a unique value proposition. Now, we're talking here about Lavazza Voicey, but before we talk about the Lavazza Voicey product itself, you have to get a little bit of an understanding about Lavazza as a company. They have been around since 1895, founded by Luigi Lavazza, and he already from the beginning understood the value of creating a differentiated product. He experimented early on with creating custom blends for his customer, and that began a journey that went forward into very unique marketing campaigns and culminated recently in actually putting a uh, espresso machine on the International Space Station. And all through that time, they've been trying to create a personal customer journey that is delivering the full coffee experience. And so when they started to work with us at Amazon, they really saw how we could work with them to make that possible. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear directly from Luigi at Lavazza on what his experience has been like and what his goals were in terms of adding Alexa to his product. Ciao, David. Good morning, everyone. And thank you very much for inviting us to this fantastic event. I'm very glad to be here with you to present you today uh, the new Lavazza a modo mio Voicey, the first coffee machine with uh, built-in. As you have seen for, from uh, the presentation before, we do have as a company more than 120 years of innovation in the coffee market. The mission we have is to always deliver the best quality coffee and the best quality coffee experience. And with Voicey, we really wanted to innovate by creating uh, uh, a new experience for the consumer by offering a unique proposition. So let's just try it and let's see how it works and how it is easy. The coffee capsules is our Lavazza Qualita Oro, which is a 100% Arabica blend. Alexa, make me a coffee. Sure, Luigi. Your favorite coffee is coming right away. On top of that, thanks to the integration with Voicey, it is possible to uh, customize the coffee by, for example, setting up the length, the temperature, to personalize the coffee moment by, for example, setting up your uh, the favorite uh, routine. And uh, mm, it is possible to track, to monitor the coffee capsules, to place an order, play music. Uh, basically, it is possible to use the whole functionality of Alexa ecosystem. The idea, the idea since the beginning was to let Voicey become a hub in the kitchen in order to let the consumer to um, have a multiple choice of interaction with the coffee machine. And uh, what we are actually uh, noticing from the first data is that Voicey is uh, done, is doing very well in terms of uh, um, Alexa engagement. We are seeing a high registration rate, a very high rate of uh, active users and more uh, those customers seem to be interacting um, with voice in multiple uh, times per day. So we are very, very happy about the final result of this innovation and we are extremely proud of the um, partnership with Amazon. And we need to thank you guys. We need to thank all Amazon Alexa people in uh, Europe, in uh, US, in Italy, because uh, uh, you really supported us, uh, you follow us since the first moment, since the beginning, when we basically started the journey more than two years ago. It was amazing to see how many people from Lavazza teams and Amazon teams did work very well together. So I will let you continue. And instead of myself, I will let Voicey say goodbye to you. Alexa, say goodbye. Ciao, David. Ciao, all. Thank you for your attention. It has been a pleasure. Isn't that great? Luigi, thank you so much for sharing with us your insights and your journey. Um, when we're looking at the customer and seeing the kind of product that we just saw demonstrated by Luigi, it really is a good example of 
how we can use the full customer journey to define that product. And when we say customer journey, what do we actually mean? Most people, when they're thinking about a product, can really get focused in on the part where I'm actually using the product. And that's a good thing to keep an eye on. But it's not the only thing that you should be thinking about when you're creating a product to put into the market. A full customer journey, and this applies to any Alexa product you would create, starts with setup, goes into the process of learning how to use the device. And of course, we just talked about the actual use of the device, but then also ongoing support and what their experience is like in that. Each portion of that customer journey is important to take into account when we're actually creating a product that is going to serve the needs of your customer. And so the first place to start is to really understand what is it that you want customers to say about your product? You know, they think about it and you can actually boil it down into really simple phrases. That's the best way to create these guiding, these guideposts for you. And for Lavazza, it was things like setup was easy. Um, it plays and learns my favorite morning music. It knows how to make my cup of coffee versus my partner's cup of coffee. It makes sure that I always have coffee available to me when I need it. It saves space on my counter. These are the kinds of self-narratives that help you really understand what it is you're trying to deliver for your customer. And once you have those parts understood, you can then take that narrative and then map it into the customer journey. And in that point, you take the customer journey and can simplify it down, not even from phrases, but even to a couple of words at each point. And so again, let's take Lavazza Voices as an example. On the setup side, it was all about smooth registration. And the learning side, it'd be great if the thing would automatically allow you to train how to use it on its own. Um, with regards to using, it was personalized brewing. That was the big thing they wanted to do. And then in support, it would have to proactively engage and, and actually do things on behalf of the customer automatically. And so these simple North Stars really allow you to understand what it is that you're trying to achieve at each phase. And then you can even go and prioritize them. So for example, you could say, okay, I wanna make sure the using is good. So I'm gonna make sure I prioritize that first. And then setup is important. And then support and then learning. And it doesn't mean you're gonna necessarily cut, but if you have to cut, it lets you understand what you can prioritize to get that product out the door on time. And now once you have that in place, you need to put in requirements that will help you meet those goals at each phase. So for example, in setup, you wanna make sure that you have the Lavazza account for Voicey connected uh, with the machine. You wanna minimize the configuration steps. For learning, you wanna drive the app download. When you're using it, you wanna just be able to ask for the coffee without having to use a skill invocation name. For support, you wanna be able to have it reorder your coffee automatically. All of these things are now requirements, as you can see, mapping to different phases of the customer journey that give you a clear way of moving forward. And then once you have these requirements, you map them to those solution components that I talked about at the beginning. So we talked about device hardware, it needs microphones or not, does it need stereo compatible? Device firmware, the companion app, what features you need on your cloud, what things you might need to put into a skill associated with the device. All of these things can then be put together to create now finally the list of requirements and how they map to each one of the components of your solution, making sure you have a complete picture of the whole plan. And so now that you have your journey defined, you have your high level goals defined, you've got your requirements and how they apply to each one of the technologies, now you can go and start to select technologies. Do I need to speak to the product? Well, then that means you're gonna need to put AVS in there. Um, could I make it into a peripheral of an uh, Echo or other Alexa product? Well, maybe I can use gadgets. Maybe I can use a smart home integration. All of these things come into play to be able to then let you pick technologies like, oh, I'm going to use AVS or, oh, no, I'm going to use Alexa Connect Kit or I'm going to um, have my own system and directly connect it because I have enough infrastructure in place or I want to use gadgets to make it a peripheral. All of these decisions can come at this point, now that you fully understand your requirements and how they apply to each one of the components that you might have in place. And this is the process that Lavazza went through 
when they were creating Voicy. They determined that AVS was the right approach because they wanted to have full support for music, including multi-room music and calling and messaging. Uh, they wanted to have uh, the capability to have top-level utterances. So they were looking for use of Alexa-tailored routing along with uh, PCO, partner-centric onboarding for custom skills. So this allowed them to really select and figure out what types of technologies they would need to be able to use. And also they needed to be able to, as I mentioned before, do the automatic reordering. So they integrated Amazon Smart Reorders to make sure that customers always had coffee when they needed it. And so with all these requirements in hand, they were able to work with the right consultancies. They were able to work with the solutions integrators, the ODMs that would map to the capabilities that they wanted to bring in in order to bring this product to market. And the result is a product that truly delivers a unique solution for the customer, but also delivers on the promise of Lavazza innovation. And so now that we've gone through it, Here's a reminder of the things that we want you to take away from this presentation. First of all, as we said, let's make sure that we start with unique value propositions at each stage of the customer journey. Understand those customer needs during the phases of learning or the phases of setup, the phases of using and of support, and then identify how those needs map to the unique value that you as a provider can bring to the table. Don't just create a product that's the same as somebody else's, actually understand and deliver on that unique value prop. And then once you have those value propositions, turn those into detailed requirements, map them to each phase of the customer solution and see how they will not only apply to the journey, but to the device hardware, the device software, a companion app, your cloud, your skill, to then make sure you can build the solution that is unique for you. And then finally, based on those requirements, now pick your technologies. Don't start and say, oh, I need an ABS product. Say, I need to deliver a product that I can speak to directly and have the customer be taken care of. That will then lead you to the place where you would need AVS, or you can say, no, I don't need to speak to it directly. So I can then integrate it as a smart home device controlled by another Alexa product. These are the kinds of decision points that you can put into play that will allow you to really have a solution that is well matched to your capabilities, your supplier chain, as well as map to the value proposition that you want to deliver. So I thank you very much for being with us here today. And I hope that you learned a little bit about what kind of process you could put in place and what journey you can follow to deliver unique value to your customer at each stage of their own Alexa journey. Thank you. Thank you.